How to prepare projected financial statements in Excel spreadsheet. In the today's video, we will learn how to prepare projected balance sheet. That is, we already covered the three parts. That is, we already prepared the projected income statement, projected statement of changes in shareholders equity, and projected cash flow statement. If you have not watched it, please watch that videos. Then you can understand the today's video link in the description below so let's start to prepare the projected balance sheet all right here in this sheet you can see that i have brought the past financial information that is this one from from here that is this one okay you can see now let me tell you one thing about this statement the balance sheet is the final financial statement that is linked with various other financial statement includes income statement a statement of changes in shareholder equity and cash flow statement okay now based on these information let's link this statement with our other statements that is our past statements that is three others financial statements we prepared in the previous video okay so first let's calculate the value of current assets and it can be calculated by simply adding the values of these three component of current assets okay so click here now press the equal to sign write the sum function to add the value okay and select from here to here okay and now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right now click here and drag from here to here okay now for cash and bank balance it can be calculated by simply taking the value from our cash flow statements okay so press the equal to sign let's go back to our cash flow statement okay and select this one to get the closing cash and cash equivalent value for this year okay and now press the enter key now click here and drag from here to here okay similarly for account receivable, it can be calculated by adding the value of account receivable with a new value of account receivable, okay? While the new account receivable can be calculated by simply subtracting the cash sales from the total sales, okay? So let's calculate it. So press the equal to sign and click this one, okay, to get the previous value. Now, plus, let's go back to our the income statement okay all right and click this one to get the total sales now press the minus sign okay and now let's go back to the cash flow statement okay and now scroll up and click here to get the cash sales amount okay and now press the enter key all right now click here and drag from here to here okay now for preliminary expenses it can be calculated by simply subtracting the amortization expenses on preliminary expenses from the previous value of preliminary expenses okay so press the equal to sign now click here now press the minus sign and let's go back to our income statement okay and select this one okay to get the annual amortization expenses on preliminary expenses okay and now press the F4 key to fix this cell and now press the enter key all right now click here and drag from here to here all right now let's calculate the non-current assets and it can be calculated by simply adding these two value okay so click here and press the equal to sign write the sum function to add the value and now select from here to here okay now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right now click here and drag from here to here all right now for property plant and equipment it can be calculated by simply subtracting the annual depreciation expenses from the previous value of property plant and equipment okay so press the equal to sign and now click here minus let's go back to our income statement all right and click here to get the annual depreciation expenses okay now Let's fix this cell by pressing the F4 key. All right. Now press the enter. All right. Now click here and drag from here to here. 
Now for long term investment, it can be calculated by simply adding the previous value of long term investment and current long term investment. Okay, so let's calculate it. So press the equal to sign. Now click here. Plus, let's go back to our cash flow statement. Okay, and you can see under the investing activities we have long term investment sections. Okay, and now click here. Okay. In this case, we don't have any amount of long-term investment. However, we have to, you know, make the link. Okay. Now, press the enter key. Now, click here and drag from here to here. All right. Now, in order to get the value of total assets, we have to add the value of current assets and non-current assets. So, press the equal to sign, tap the sum function, and click here. Press comma and click here. Now, press the close parentheses. Now, press the enter key. All right. Now click here and drag from here to here. All right. Now let's move on to our the equity and liability section. Now, so first, owner's equity. It can be calculated by simply adding these three values. Okay. So press the equal to send. Type the sum function. Now press the tab and click here and drag from here to here. Now press the close parenthesis. Now press the enter. All right. Now click here and drag from here to here. Now for equity share capital, it can be simply calculated by adding the value of common stock plus additional parent capital. Okay, so let's calculate it. So press the equal to sign. Let's go back to a statement of changes in shareholder equity. Okay, all right, and click here plus click here. Okay, and now press the enter key. All right, now click here and drag from here to here. All right. Now, to calculate the return earning, we can simply calculate it by bringing the value from our statement of changes in shareholder equity. Okay, so press the equal to sign. Now, let's go back to that statement. Okay, and select this one. This is our return earning amount. Okay, and now press the enter key. All right, now click here and drag from here to here. Similarly, we have the reserve surplus for this component. We can calculate simply adding the previous value of reserve and surplus with the current one okay so press the equal to sign and now click here and in order to do the sum or add we have to you know use the plus sign here okay but i am going to put the minus sign because in our statement of changes in shareholder equity we used negative sign okay so that i am going to you know use the minus sign here okay so press the minus sign okay now let's go to that statement all right so click here and you can see that this is our the value of reserve and surplus so click this one okay and now press the enter key okay now click here and drag from here to here all right now for liabilities it can be simply calculated by adding the value of current liabilities and non-current liabilities okay so press the equal to sign write the sum function now press the tab and and click here comma click here and now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right now click here and drag from here to here for current liabilities it can be simply calculated by adding the component of current liabilities so let's start to calculate it so press the equal to sign write the sum function now press the tab and select from here to here now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key now click here and drag from here to here okay now for account payable it can be calculated by simply adding the previous value of account payable with the current one while the current value of account payable can be calculated by simply subtracting the current cash payment from the total cost of goods sold okay so let's calculate it so press the equal to sign and now click here now press the plus sign okay now let's go back to our you know cash flow statement okay all right and you can see we have you know paid you know eight lakh eighty thousand out of how much let's see so to see the value of total cogs we have to go to you know the income statement you can see this one that is out of 11 lakh so we have to you know select this one so click here and now press the minus sign okay and 
let's go back to our cash flow statement all right okay now here we have to select this one but remember one thing here our, this value is in negative figure right but if you will you know select this value then this value will be you know added because we already used the minus sign here okay so we have to you know change this sign from minus to plus okay so i'm going to change the sign from minus to plus okay now click here and now click here okay now you can you know remove this one from here to here okay all right all right now click here and now press the enter key all right now click here and drag from here to here okay now for non current current liabilities it can be calculated by simply adding the component of this section okay so press the equal to sign write the sum function now press the tab and select from here to here now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key now click here and drag from here to here now for bank term loan it can be calculated by simply subtracting the repayment amount from our previous value of bank loan okay so press the equal to sign now click here and minus we have to you know subtract the repayment amount and it can be you know taken from the our cash flow statement okay so let's go so let's go to that statement okay so click here and you can see that this is our the repayment you know rows okay so click here okay but remember one thing this value is already in the negative form so that we have to change change the sign from minus to plus okay so i'm going to change the sign from minus to plus okay and now select this one so after clearing this okay select this one now press the enter key all right you can see okay now click here and drag from here to here okay now in order to get the total equity and liabilities value we have to you know add the total value of the owner's equity and liabilities okay so press the equal sign write the sum function and now click here comma click here and now press the close parenthesis now press the enter key all right you can see now click here and drag from here to here okay you can see that our different i have you know put row called different to check the accuracy okay you can see we have a different of negative 0.01 due to rounding in value so we can you know identify the criteria so here i have found uh you know this this component okay and here i'm going to you know change the value from 0.44 to 0.43 and now press the enter here all right let's see okay so you can see and it will be you know also used like this and this one okay now you can see now our balance sheet is equal okay so guys it's a very easy to calculate it to prepare it within a minutes or in hour okay and it is a fully automated you know sheet you can see and we successfully read the projected financial statement in a four part okay you can prepare in a single sheet as well let me show you you can see here in this sheet i have you know made all the financial statement into a one single sheet okay you can see all right but uh, i have made the video part wise because to easily understand okay all right so guys uh, we successfully completed this series okay if you have any query related to this please ask me in the comment box below thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video series that's all for now we will see you in the next video Signing off.